It's the historic 100th playing of the Illinois High School Boys Basketball Tournament. Defending state champion Simeon versus first time state finalist O'Fallon. The home of America's original March Madness. Next. On the IHSA TV network. evening here in Peoria as we celebrate the centennial of America's original March Madness. It all started with Peoria way back in 1908 when the Peoria High Lions won the first ever IHSA State Basketball Championship. And we celebrate here tonight 100 years of high school basketball. And it's an historic evening for Chicago Simeon as they try to become the first public league team to win back-to-back -back state championships. And on St. Patty's Day, they play O'Fallon, laddies. And here for the call of tonight's championship game, Dave Bernhardt and Mark Lindo. Thank you very much, Lee. And, you know, not only are we capping those 100 years, we are capping the final game of the two-class system in Illinois. And we may get a couple of questions answered here tonight. One, will we see the greatest team to have ever played in the Illinois State Basketball Tournament, or might we see the greatest upset? 100th anniversary of March Madness. It ends tonight. Will it be Simeon, or will the luck of Oak Island be smiling on the Irish tonight? Let's take a look at how these two teams got to Peoria to this very game here on this Saturday night. Wins over Leo and St. Joe's sent Simeon here into Peoria. Big win over Thornton. Tim Flowers, Derek Rose, Kevin Johnson combining for 69 points. And then Derek Rose went for 22 today in the semifinal win over Marshall. For O'Fallon, after wins over Altoff and Eisenhower, a big three-pointer from Mike Mallott gave O'Fallon the win over Lockport, 48-45. And then earlier today, four players in double figures for the Panthers, led by Brad Copeland's big game, 24 points and 16 rebounds. Folks have come to Peoria. They have turned on their TV sets. They have watched him wherever he has gone for the last three years. Our spotlighted player for Simeon. Who else? Derek Rose. Not enough superlatives to talk about Derek Rose. He's the best of the best. He's a human highlight film. Put it in tonight and keep the reels. He is a legend in the making. Look at those numbers. And a young man who made a name for himself here earlier today. That's Brad Copeland. Brad Copeland's a special player in his own right. Southern Illinois, Edwardsville was interested. I think the whole state of Illinois mid-majors are. He's versatile, he can play every spot on the floor. He's a threat inside and outside, and he can handle a rock as well. No matter how these two teams coming into this ball game favored, or possibly maybe the big underdog, there's keys to the game. Let's take a look at our Chevy keys to the game, brought to you by your Chevy dealers, proud to support high school athletes and their families. Best of luck in the tournament from your winning Chevy team here at Simeon. They need extra uh, opportunities, offensive boards, second chance points, look for Flowers and Johnson to be real active on the glass. Stop and go. This team has the ability to run, but also play half court sets and never a doubt, they must make a statement. Are they or are they not the best ever? O'Fallon, this is what they need to do. Double trouble. Kenny Leverett scoring, must compliment Copeland scoring here tonight. Toe the line, this team shoots 71% from the charity stripe. They were 21 for 25 today. They must attack and get there 20 plus times today and then dream on. This team must create their own swagger, expect the upset and understand that nothing in athletics or life happens unless first a dream. So does Simeon put their stamp as the best team ever in state history or does O'Fallon shock the state and the nation? We'll find out. Let's go to our public address announcer, Paul Herzog. Good evening, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association and the city of Peoria, welcome to Carver Arena for America's original March Madness. In this, the 100th year of the state championship series in Illinois, the championship game tonight features the defending champions, the AA winners from last year, Chicago Simeon Wolverines, a record of 32 and two, and the O'Fallon Panthers, a record of 28 and seven. Before we meet the starting lineups, Please stand and observe a moment of silence to reflect on our freedom and to remember the men and women of the armed forces serving us around the world. Thank you, as we thank them. And now, please remove your caps and address the flag with your hand over your heart. Our guest quintet from Roxana High School, Caleb Hobbs, Ethan Wright, Josh Biro. Kevin Rader, and Michael Tulin. 
sing the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the barrel us fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare of bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner Let's meet the starting lineups for this championship game. At a guard for Chicago, Simeon, a 6'2 senior, 24, Brandon Hall. At a guard for O'Fallon, a 6'1 senior, 11, Mike Mollott. At a guard for the Wolverines, a 6'3 senior, 25, Derek Rose. And a forward for the Panthers, a 6'3 junior, 30, Keith Burton. And a forward for Chicago Simeon, a 6'3 senior, 32, Bryant Orange. And a forward for O'Fallon, a 6'3 junior, 32, Kenny Leverett. And a forward for the Wolverines, a 6'6 senior, 34, Kevin Johnson. And a forward for the Panthers, a 6'3 junior, 41, Jared Wolfo. And a forward for Simeon, a 6'5 senior, 52, Timothy Flowers. At center for O'Fallon, a 6'7 senior, 21, Brad Copeland. Head coach for Simeon in his third year, a record of 94 and 11, Robert Smith. Head coach in his second year at O'Fallon, a record of 48 and 18, Rick Gibson. No other state in America can claim the rich history and tradition that's been generated by March Madness in Illinois. It's America's original March Madness. Please direct your attention to the arena floor and meet the officials for this game. Referee, Demetrius Randall of Peoria. From Bloomington, Ronnie Jones. And from Bensonville, Kevin Grayer. Presenting the game for this ball will be Chad Fox, insurance agent, Country Insurance Financial Services, one of the March Madness Experience sponsors. All of us thank Country and Insurance for their contribution to the greatest high school single event in the land. Here are your starting lineups brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. For Simeon, an experienced starting five. They are all seniors, two All-Staters, Derek Rose, along with Tim Flowers. On the other side, for O'Fallon, Malat Copeland seniors, and the rest are juniors. So it's a young O'Fallon team who has never, prior to this season, never won a sectional game as playing for the state title. Copeland and Lavarette have been scintillating both games. Malat hit a big three yesterday at showtime, but he's been inconsistent. He will have to nail some jump shots, get his feet underneath them early on tonight. Simeon has been the visiting team in all three of these tournament games wearing the dark jerseys. And this is Derek Rose. 
And very quickly, we see Kenny Leverett drawing the defensive assignment against Rose. They want to go inside early to Flowers. They jump all over Leverett. This is Malak. Wolfolk's not afraid to shoot it. Leverett knocks it free. He's got another chance. Cannot hang on. Here are these two cities. You've got Chicago from Cook County. Enrollment for Simeon, 16-38, playing out of Chicago Public League. An O'Fallon. Enrollment of 2371, St. Clair County in the Southwestern Conference. Simeon goes to Flowers early on, but you see Copeland push them away out of his comfort zone about eight to 10 feet away. It's all about spacing and positioning. Brandon Hall hit some big shots against Marshall early today. Can't do it there, but finishing it up is Kevin Johnson so strong inside. Of course, Simeon coming from Chicago. We go all the way down just east of St. Louis to find O'Fallon. They meet here in the middle in Peoria to defy decide a Class 2A state champion. Kevin Johnson, 72% from the line coming in. The UW-Milwaukee recruits, and I think he has an incredible upside. He has hops that you just can't teach, and he still has, he has a long and athletic body. If he improves his perimeter game, he's going to take it to another level. His college teammate will be Tim Flowers. Splits his free throws, and now O'Fallon, their second offensive trip. We see early Simeon putting a little three-quarter court pressure. Copeland, that big game in the semis today. And a walk. They get the early travel. You see Simeon coming out with pressure, as you mentioned, much more aggressive than even the two quarterfinal games or the game that we saw at UIC in the Super, really trying to make a statement and get after O'Fallon. Put, put that strategy in their back pocket. Hall can't find the range. Put back by Brian Orange. Flowers gets a chance. Hey, there's our key to the game, and they are making it stand early, those extra opportunities, and they bang the glass twice for second chance points out of four. Simeon so strong, so long, and another pick. Rose rises, three to Leverett. No Fallon wants to push it. Here comes Leverett. Contact with Flowers, Copeland to follow. Copeland with a nice foul, three on one. Leverett, maybe not a good choice, good decision making. He had two people over on the wings, tried to make him play the self. Copeland bailed him out for the deuce. Brad Copeland averaging 12.2, as we said, he doubled that number earlier today. We've seen the high low, now we see the turnaround jump from Johnson. Another offensive rebound. Brian Orange. Simeon with five points, all of them on the offensive glass. They split a pair of free throws and two stick back buckets. Brian Orange had eight rebounds earlier today. Burton can't get it to go, it's knocked away. Flowers. Simeon fans wanted a foul. The other way come the Panthers. Burton for two. Burton played 30 minutes today. We'll see how long his legs wear. O'Fallon played three or four guys, 29, 30, 31 minutes. Will fatigue be a factor? Simeon much more rested with their starters today. Inside Flowers, you are not going to stop him here. Tim Flowers, maybe the best post player in the state the last two years. This Posting up at the box. He's a wide body, really difficult to defend. O'Fallon trying to double down on him and make him throw the ball back outside. But he's so strong and has a presence in the paint. Soft touch from the line. Flowers with three points, three different starters on the board for Simeon. Simeon very well coached as far as their entry passes to the post. A good passer will not pass the ball to his teammate, but pass the ball away from the defense, and they do a very good job executing that fundamental. Simeon out to the three-point lead. You are watching Boys AA State Championship from Illinois, and it's Wolverines over the Panthers. We'll be back after this. 
Back at Carver Arena, Simeon, the 7-4 lead over O'Fallon here in the early going. We're with O'Fallon Athletic Director Todd Moeller. Todd, it's been a great year for O'Fallon Athletics. Tell me about that. Well, in the last uh, three seasons, our baseball team placed third. Um, and, uh, we had a cheerleading squad placed first in state. Our bowling, uh, bowling team placed sixth, and now our basketball team's uh, competing for a state championship. And uh, our community is proud. Just very excited for him. Uh, we're representing our conference, the Southwestern Conference, and uh, we're just we're just happy as heck to be here. Hey, good luck to you tonight. Right. Thank you, sir. Hey, if any, it's going to happen to anybody on St. Patty's Day, it's got to be a team named O'Fallon, right, Laddie? Uh, <laughs> Dave, back over to you. And he's got to like the looks of that. Brad Copeland putting it back off the miss, and we've got ourselves a one-point game. Simeon bringing the ball up the floor. They're just two of ten from the field, but seven rebounds. So they've been shooting till we make her. Another miss, another rebound, and there's your bucket. Now they're three for 12, but eight rebounds, and they're just playing tip it, tip it, tip it on the backboards right now. It's no contest 10 feet and above. To the baseline is Wolfolk. Nice dish inside to Keith Burton. Take a look at the team comparisons. Scoring average, sending out about 10 more than O'Fallon. Everything else relatively close. North versus South here in this final two class state championship ball game. Burton with a nice little slash to the basket, received the pass, drew some contact, got himself to the free throw line. We mentioned toe the line as one of our keys too. This basketball team, O'Fallon, must own the free throw line tonight. They cannot defeat this powerful Simeon ball club unless they make 18 to 20 free throws. And in this tournament, these two games in Peoria, the Panthers are 37 of 45 from the line. They were 14 for 16 to seal that semifinal win this afternoon. Now Fallon is within two past the midway point of the first quarter and they are feeding a post tonight the Wolverines are. Flowers another miss. And a foul inside will go against O'Fallon. Robert Smith's club working on a 21 game winning streak. Last ball game they lost came in Madison Square Garden back on January 14th. That was just a two pointer. They play a formidable schedule. They're ready for this kind of venue and this kind of championship aura. They send Johnson to the high post. He has it now. Hall to Rose and the low blocks right. That's Tim Flowers. I think this is what makes them so special. They can run up and down the floor and they can play half court basketball. They ran everything perfectly except the last shot there by Brandon Hall. And a foul will go against Simeon. The typical frustration foul, if you will. An easy lay-in missed, and then Orange reaches in. There's one of those unsung players for Simeon off the bench. As you see Brandon Hall having a seat. Keon Smith checking into the game for the Wolverines does so many things for this club. Chance for a tie. Leverett the drive. And he'll get two free throws. Both these teams have played Lockport. O'Fallon did it about 24 hours ago. Knocked them off by three and that win over Lockport by Simeon took place in the Pontiac Holiday Tournament. Leverett 72 percent in his own right from the line. He split the defense beat his man out front. Wolverines no rotation whatsoever from the weak side to stop the basketball and Leverett gets himself to the foul line. Kenny Leverett his dad has seen him play twice this season. And what's his dad doing tonight. He's stationed in Iraq. And we're hoping he's catching this ball game on the Internet. Made possible through the IHSA TV network and IHSA.org. So Kenneth, if you're watching your son, he's doing great, and we thank you for all your service to our country. Amen on that one. A tough shot. Another whistle. I'm going to say that that foul came on the floor. Good call by Demetrius Randall. Not the fact that he got the foul, but he got that ball on the floor. Nice try by Derrick Rose. You're taught to get the ball up to the chin any way you can, but that foul was definitely before the shot attempt. Well, now here we are at the 245 mark. Both big men for each of these teams. Brad Copeland for O'Fallon and Tim Flowers for Simeon with two fouls each. The kick out from Rose to Smith, and he can hurt you. A 
lot can that penetrate on Smith. See O'Fallon is running the basketball when they have opportunities, but really trying to get four, five, six touches. The best way to get a man open, as many times you can reverse the ball, your opportunity to break down a defense by using both horizontal and vertical screens increases by every pass. Orange steps in the passing lane. Johnson with the left hand. 100 points against St. Rita here in the state tournament for Simeon, and you saw their low total in that loss to Rice of New York back on January 14th. Now, when you talk about Johnson again, he's my man of the future. He's a big timer right now, but what about his ability to use both vision and soft hands to make that catch in traffic and then still get the ball to the glass and get himself to the free throw line? Brock Conley checks into the ball game, replacing Keith Burton. Leverett with that personal foul, that's his second. So now Copeland and Leverett with two fouls each. Expect Simeon to right here run and jump on Malott right now. Rose is kind of hanging in the weeds, and there he comes. To the corner, Conley, three-point shooter. Copeland has his shot blocked inside. Brad Copeland did such a marvelous job in the semifinals today, that very thing. He was an absolute force inside for the Panthers in the win over Stevenson. He was surrounded by about 20 foot of Wolverine humanity <laughs> right there. Triple team at about six, 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 seven each. Entry pass from Connolly looking for Wolfolk. Simeon building on the six point lead. Flowers quick spin to the hole. He'll kick his own miss and finish it. What a great play by Flowers. He's just very, very much uh, agility gifted. He was able to shoot the ball from one side, miss, follow it on the other side for the lay, and another second chance opportunity. A lot. Copeland the tip attempt. Flowers is too strong inside. Miss from Rose. Now the Panthers from O'Fallon looking to hit double digits here in the first quarter as we are under 60 seconds. Malat takes it right to the hole. What a great move by Malat. That's probably the best distribution that he's made as far as going and putting an overdrive to the bucket. He split the defense and he was able to finish that play. That's a walk, double dribble actually. And here's O'Fallon with 34 seconds left. You can tell already here in the first eight minutes of this game, they are not intimidated. They have come up here to play for a state championship. Absolutely, they've created an identity. The identity is, we'll get it up and down with you, we'll run with you in the open floor, but we're gonna be very disciplined in our half-court game, get numerous touches, and try to break down the defense and then set up and get our feet underneath us for three-point shots after penetration. Not much to call right now, David. Each team pretty <laughs> satisfied with what they're looking at. We're at 10 seconds right now. And we'll start with Malad. He better hurry. He's at six. Down to three. Leverett, three. And that ends the quarter. Very nonchalant final 10 seconds. However, O'Fallon gets the triple out of it. And they trail the top-ranked team in the state, the sixth-ranked team in the country, by three, back to the second quarter after these local messages. Dreams and teams. It starts in places like these, backyards and playgrounds. From Carbondale to Chicago, Quincy to Danville, they dream of the IHSA tournament. And for 40 years, Country Insurance and Financial Services has been here too, proud to support their goals and yours. This is our country. 16-13, the Simeon lead here as we start the second quarter. We are with Derek Rose's brother, Reggie. And, uh, Reggie, a great article in Sports Illustrated earlier this year about how you and the other brothers have kind of surrounded Derek and given him kind of a, I don't know, a cocoon to kind of keep him safe, to, you know, from the exterior 
uh, distractions that uh, come with being a star basketball player? Well, it wasn't really a cocoon. It was just basically family value, and that's the way we was brought up. So we tried to place that in him, you know, and he and, and he, he just he just took it in and embraced it, you know, and. I feel my little brother, he, he, he's, he's a great kid. I can't even say kid, he's a great young man now. You know, and I just hope him all the success in the world. I hope he get the victory tonight. You know, and it's just basically the, the uproof of our mom and our grandmother which make the Rose family so special. It has to make you feel very good when people talk about this team maybe being one of the greatest of all times. Derek being one of the great guards of all time up there with the Isaiah Thomases of the world. Yes, it made me feel great, absolutely, because I basically coach all these kids during the summer on my AAU team, so I'm proud of all these kids. You know, I, I, I love these kids just like I love Derek, you know, and, you know, and I wish them well. I absolutely do. Great work. All right, thanks All right, a lot. good luck to you, Reggie. Reggie Rose, big brother, looking after Derek. It's hard to think of a player like Derek as a little brother, isn't it? He's such a great player, guys. <laughs> no, indeed. And that uh, family decision process will mean Derek Rose will head to Memphis and play his college basketball at Memphis University as we take a look at our Menards first quarter stats. Save big money at Menards. Field goals five out of 13 for O'Fallon. They got to shoot lights out if they're going to hang around there to be 50 percent or above. Simeon five for 18. That's ugly, but they just keep getting offensive rebounds and popping them back. Tim Flowers with eight points and he's picked up almost all eight of those points off his own misses. Three offensive rebounds equals six points. That's a storyline. Here's Malat. Nice feed inside to Leverett. But there is Smith with the block. Oh, my. The other way come the Wolverines. Johnson, Flowers for two. Oh, and that was keyed by the block of Smith on the other end. They keep the ball in play on the block. One out, pass, and then it's run for fun. Two and done right there. Simeon playing contrasting styles up and down and half court, doing them both remarkably well. Leverett, the offensive board off the Malat miss. And the scoop. Kenny Leverett coming up big. He has six. Silky smooth as he just kind of forgot his body turned, kept it away from the defense. Rose, or excuse me, Flower stayed vertical, let him shoot the ball, and he dipped it in. Leverett, one of the top unknown juniors in this state, and he's going to get a steal here. Can't control it, though. Kenny Leverett playing for O'Fallon outside of St. Louis. As Coach Rick Gibson says, you know, if, if we played up in the Chicago area, he'd be on everybody's internet websites, all their recruiting lists. Well, this is a type of a tournament here where that young man, number 32, Kenny Leverett's going to get a lot of exposure in a lot of places. He's our best on the ball defender. He plays point guard. He plays off guard. Very versatile because he can swing to a couple different positions. Gibson says that it's hard to find a kid that can lead you in so many different ways. That's just strength right there from Orange. What a dish! Show time personified right there. The steal, the dish, and the flush. And that happened in about 1.5 seconds. Three great plays. Conley looks to answer. They're looking at Kevin Johnson. Let's take a look back. Got a nice little dish, one step, and the station point on the finish. Dunkin' Donuts and a slam dunk on that one. Nice flush. They leave Burton open for three. A couple of opportunities to cut into the lead for O'Fallon. Orange thought about it. Smith does more with it. Here come the Panthers. They push to Conley. Every dribble contested if you're Kenny Leverett. Yeah, they are under duress every time they dribble the ball, pass the ball, numerous deflections by a Simeon team that is more active than any of the last, you know, the three previous games you and I have seen them active with their hands, active with their feet, and just you can see the purpose and mission in their mindset and the way they carry their bodies tonight. They came here to win a state championship their entire season to win a state championship, become the first Chicago Public League to win back-to-back -back state titles. Rose to Johnson, another two. Kevin Johnson has nine points, and that's the Simeon lead. Ten points off turnovers in the game already for the Wolverines. Malat will get a chance. The feed. Inside the post to Copeland. Spun, he was looking. 
for somebody to be on his back. Nobody was there, so he drops it in. Simeon, the seven-point lead. Johnson. Kevin Johnson coming up huge here this evening. That's the added dimension we talked about at the open the first couple minutes of this ball game. This young man at 6'7", might get to 6'6", to six, six, might get to 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, he's a leaper. He plays above the rim, but he's now developing that jump shot, an extra dimension to his game. I think he's going to be a real special player for UW-Mill. And yes. He has 12 points. Just like that. Simeon, the 10 point advantage. Wolfok had that shot partially blocked. Rose ahead, running the floor. How about that? Big man taking it all the way. 13 4 run this quarter, and what a great pass. That was like a Bob Greasy type pass over the defense by Rose. Saw his man, great vision, and executed perfectly. Right now, O'Fallon has to be careful. Look out. Rose Johnson. Simeon fans came to their feet. They thought something special was going to happen, but instead, Johnson will have to settle for two free throws. This is the best four-minute segment that the Wolverines have put together the last four games, and the cream rises to the top. They saved it for the marquee matchup, showtime here in the state title game, and right now they are really playing superb basketball. It's being keyed on the defensive end. They have different levels, both offensively and defensively. They can kick it up to. It's almost like there's a little dial that they we're going to play at a four. We're going to play at a five. Well, they're cooking it right now. Two more free throws for Kevin Johnson. He has 14 points. And just like that, the Simeon lead is up to 14. 31 17 back after these local messages. Dave Bernhardt and Mark Lindo back with you in Peoria. Chicago Public League, back-to-back -back championship games. Now remember, Simeon is looking to become the first Public League team to actually win back-to-back -back titles. You see, Carver lost to Champaign back in 1963 after having won it in 62. King, they won the championship game in 86, lost it in 87. Simeon, uh-huh, to be determined here in 2007. Robert Smith told me the other day, if they win this basketball game, he doesn't know if he'll call his team the best in the, in the state history, but he would call it history the, uh, in, in, uh, the, in the city, as we will. 15 to four run this quarter, spearheaded by Kevin Johnson. He has 11 of their 15 points this quarter, 14 overall right now. And he and Tim Flowers combining for 26 of the Wolverines, 31 points. Another three-point shot attempt, this one by Malat. And there is Flowers, elbows off to his side, his sixth rebound of the night. Five minute timeout, which actually came well underneath five minutes. Welcome sight for head coach Rick Gibson, a second year head man at O'Fallon. Knocking it down is Daniel Green. Not Green a, with the three. Not a bad guy to bring off the bench right there as Rose just kind of lulled the defense to sleep. Green caught it, got his feet underneath him, one two step, and stroked it from about 20. Johnson away with it. Rose wants to run. Here he comes. Flowers. Oh, that is pretty. Oh, so pretty. Textbook play right there. Fill the lanes. He looked to his left, hit this man in stride with a bounce pass right at the hands. A great pass is where you get a guy the ball. Wolfo momentarily puts an end to this run. His first basket of the night is worth three. Again, the other way. Carbon copy. Derek Rose is handing out the dimes right now. He is giving a little bit of money to everybody. And Wolfolk answers the other way. Here we go. Rose already with six, make that five assists in this game. So he's handed out 50 cent, if you will. <laughs> Looking for another, can Smith do it? 
Leverett along the sideline. And they're just checking him up in three-point range right now. Copeland will follow. In a couple second half up chance opportunities of their own. They have 10 points off their offensive glass, and Copeland starting to establish himself like he did this afternoon. He has eight points and seven rebounds already. A six foot seven inch senior from O'Fallon. That's strength that gets Tim Flowers to the rack. There is no doubt in my mind, how about yours? Has Brad Copeland showed that he is a mid level Division I player? See Flowers getting the ball deep there. What else is new? He's double teamed. He takes the ball from the near side of the tin to the far side, using the rim to protect him, and gets himself to the free throw line again. Copeland picked up his third foul in that exchange, but your comment about has he elevated himself here in this tournament? Oh, yeah. He's had some big games in big time atmospheres. Now, Copeland was out there with two fouls, but I really believe Rick Gibson thought, I can't sit him the whole second quarter. He has to be out there. He had Leverett and Copeland out there with two, but he had no choice. Otherwise, this game could get out of hand. And now with Copeland sitting there, it just might. Well, Fallon will have to weather the last minute 42 here. 18 first half points from Tim Flowers to go with six rebounds, and he'll have a seat. Flowers, 28 points and 12 rebounds in the quarterfinal against Thornton last evening. You know, you made a great point to me before the broadcast. He's an All-Stater, and nobody really recognizes that because you're playing with an All-American. And Rose will stick it back in Leverett's face. And he is able to draw the contact on Derrick Rose. That will be Rose's first foul. Now we are talking about Brad Copeland. One thing about Brad is he's had to come back from an ACL injury last year. He had to go through four hours of rehab a day to get him to this point. You know, he said he came back in about two months after the injury. It usually takes six. That's how much he busted his tail to get back on the court. Wolfolk strong inside. He has eight points, and he matches Copeland's eight. 40-27, Simeon. Underneath 60 to play here in the first half. Wolverines would have no problem holding for the last 45 seconds. It's always anticipation. What will Derrick Rose do that's really special? Get a look at him now. Green. Nice inside position from Wolfolk. And he's fouled. Dan Smith with the foul. Maybe not the shot down there that Simeon would have had liked with 30 seconds to go. Rose penetrated. Probably should have kicked the ball back out. Gives O'Fallon another chance to maybe whittle this thing down to 10 at the half if they can knock down a three. How will they choose to use these final 20 seconds? Leverett and Rose. Junior versus senior. Better watch that five count. Uh-oh. Leverett just lost track of who he had and how close he had with him. Very cerebral play by Derek Rozo. He was there actually helping the official by having his arm out, basically saying, hey, I'm within an arm's length right now. Give me that call. And then he got the chop and the five count. Good play by Derek Rose, fundamentally and mentally. Here he comes to finish the quarter from the free throw line with 1.2 remaining. Derek Rose, for people watching, has zero points, yet he has been the most exciting player on the floor. Not the most valuable. You got to look at Flowers and Johnson. But number 25, he's special, and it's magical every time he gets his hand on the rock. <laughs> they don't agree with me, do they? I have to laugh at the O'Fallon fans. And you can see the little grin creep across Derrick Rose's face. O'Fallon fans were chanting overrated. <laughs> you know they didn't mean it, but Derrick got a kick out of it. We're going to the locker room. Simeon on top of O'Fallon, 
22-27. The Panthers have played it tough. Wolverines on a mission, leading by 14. They've ridden 32 points combined from Kevin Johnson and Tim Flowers. Let's go to Lee Hall. He's standing by with Robert Smith. All right, Dave, thanks a lot, boy. Uh, your two big guys had an awfully good first half. Oh, yeah, we did a good job of getting them the ball in transition and getting it in the post area to Tim, and we kind of beat them up and down the floor a little bit. Anything out there that you didn't like in the first half? Uh, we let them get some offensive rebounds. They score a lot of their baskets on second shots. We got to cut that out and then play a little bit better defense. All right, Coach, good luck to you second half. Okay, thanks. All right, Robert Smith of Simeon going for back-to-back -back state titles. We will be back with the trophy presentation for our third and fourth place teams coming up right after this on the ice. Doug Damaraki of Granny Warrant representing Division Two. Ross Cuccio of Oaklawn Richards representing Division Three. Jim Boyd of Port Byron Riverdale representing Division Four. Paul Whittington of East Peoria representing Division Six. Anthony Rainey of Chicago Luther South, an at-large member, and Treasurer Greg Bradley of Mount Zion. Presenting the fourth place medallions will be Doug Damaraki, assisted by Jim Boyd. At this time, please meet the Patriots of Lincolnshire Stevenson, who finished the 2000 season in fourth place with a record of 27 and 7. Let's meet the superintendent of Stevenson, Dr. Eric Twadell. Athletic director, John Martin. Athletic trainer, Adam Kehoe. Head coach, Pat Ambrose. Assistant coach, Paul Swan. Assistant coach, J.J. Pearl. Assistant coach, Steve Wood. Now the Patriot players, Todd Siegel, Jong Lee, Kevin Steinman, Michael Goldstein, Dylan Richter, Cody Hines, Corey Hickman, John Taylor, Chase Berman, Michael Cantor, Blake Eckenberg, Thomas Perazzi. Daniel Rebnord. Jake Weiner. Henry Wood. And Kevin Moffat. At this time, Meet the Commandos of Chicago Marshall, who finished in third place, a record of 25 and 7. Let's meet the Chief High School Officer of Marshall, Dr. Donald Pittman. Presenting to O'Fallon, I'm sorry, presenting to Marshall, or Anthony Rainey, assisted by Ross Cuccio, Principal Juan Gardner, Athletic Director Dorothy Gators, Head Coach Lamont Bryant, Assistant Coach Tommy West.
Assistant Coach Gulliver Washington. Assistant Coach Gerald Richardson. Assistant Coach Danny Little. Assistant Coach Morris Hare. Manager Jonathan Jones. Now the commando players. Tavares Davis. Darcel Fairfax. Ryan Hare. Eric Harris. Jerron Lee. Ardarius Simmons. Darius Smith. Dion Stamps. Michael Stovall. Marvin Sykes. Timothy Taylor. Dorian Tyler. And Pierre Harrington. Presenting the fourth place trophy will be Greg Bradley. Will Coach Ambrose and the captains of Stevenson step forward and receive the fourth place trophy? Double A 2007. <laughs> Presenting the third place trophy will be Ron Connor. Will Coach Bryant, the captains of Marshall, step forward and receive the third place trophy? 2007 Double A. Congratulations to both schools for great seasons and a great effort here in Peoria. Congratulations to Stevenson picking up their first state basketball trophy. Congratulations also to Marshall. They go back to back with third place trophies. Fellow Public League member Simeon looking to go back to back here in a championship game. Wolverines leading O'Fallon 41-27. More coming up at the half after these words from your local sponsors. 100 Years of Madness, a centennial celebration of the IHSA Boys Basketball Tournament with articles on every tournament since 1908. There's 18 feature stories, over 600 photos, including all the great players and coaches. It's a must for any basketball fan. Order at IHSA.org or 1-309-663-6377. But don't miss 100 Years of Madness, a history of boys basketball in the state of Illinois. Halftime at the Peoria Civic Center. We're here in the Class AA Boys State Championship game. Simeon leads O'Fallon 41-27. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Kusak. We're here at the Chevy Performance Studio, joined by Mike Allis and Bill Hitt. And, guys, we saw O'Fallon only down by three points going into that second quarter, and then Simeon jumps out to a 15-4 run to start the quarter and continued in their winning ways. Yeah, Sarah, I've just been impressed with the efficiency that Simeon has executed on the offensive end. And when they didn't get the quick shots in the post, they'd get the offensive putbacks, and it was just tough for O'Fallon to get stops. Then in the second quarter, they got out and ran and, and had some transition points 
as well. So they're very efficient. Almost every time down, they're getting points. Let's take a look at these halftime stats brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. And we look here right now in uh, Bill, nine to three on the assist. We see the way that Simeon's been moving the ball tonight. You know, they've been getting the ball up the court quickly. And just like Mike said, they, they've been very efficient, 14 for 32. Um, a lot of those are, are uh, transition baskets and, and a lot of putbacks as well. Best way to do it, get those easy buckets. Points off of turnover, Simeon 13 to Fallon's three. And then we see points in the paint, 22. Kevin Johnson and Timothy Flowers for Simeon combining for 32 points. So they're doing a great job of getting inside. There you see Flowers leading the game here with 18 points. Johnson with 14 for O'Fallon. Copeland has eight points, and Woolfolk also has eight points. Leverett with six. We're going to be back with some more action. Don't leave us, Simeon, looking to make this a back-to-back -back state title run. We're going to be back after we hear from these local sponsors. Back at Carver Arena, 41-27, the Simeon lead over O'Fallon. And uh, we're joined by Rick Gibson and Coach uh, Turnovers, inside points, points in the paint, those kind of things hurt you in the first half. Yeah, that's what's killing us right now. I mean, we're, we're not getting back very well in transition. They're shooting a lot of layups off turnovers, and they got two big boys that we're not getting physical enough with. You know, that's got to change. we got to get physical with those guys to be able to handle the ball. 14-point deficit. How do, you, how do you eat into that and, and give yourself a chance at the end? You know, I mean, it can't all happen at once, but, you know, we got some guys that can shoot the ball, and it's just a matter of them getting some confidence and knocking some down, trying to chip away a little at a time. Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck to you, second Thank half. You. All right, second half action coming your way right after this on the IHSA TV network. Welcome back to Carver Arena with Lee Hall and Mark Lindo. I'm Dave Bernard. Let's take a look at first half highlights. See him a lot, split the defense there, kissing off the glass, a nice little drive. Then Simeon getting it out in transition, two on one, great distribution, and the finish by Kevin Johnson. Well, Fallon's going to come right back at you. Wolfolk. A little bit of dip and drive. He buries it from about 17 foot out. He's been pretty consistent here today. And then another gift in transition. The recipient is Rose. He comes uh, from Rose is Flowers. And they swell, smell pretty sweet together. I'll tell you what, that's a nice tandem. Well, Rick Gibson says, you know, if we can shoot the ball, he's three of 14 from three point range. They ran into that stretch where there are about six straight trips down the floor where they just fired up a three pointer. Now granted, if they go down, all of a sudden, we have ourselves a much closer game than 14 points. But I thought O'Fallon fell out of it a little bit there in terms of their, their whole game plan fell out of it. Pace was a little bit too fast for the, they would have liked. Now they're trailing. They're going to have to continue to play a fast pace. That does not go in their favor. The miss from Woolfolk to start it. Brandon Hall back into the ball game. And we saw in those highlights just touching briefly on it different ways that Simeon can beat you. We've seen the inside power game. We've seen some outside shooting. We've seen the break. Here's a shot from Hall, and there's a three. Good skip pass from Derrick Road. He was spotted up. Hall gets his feet underneath him and buries it. Biggest lead in that first half was 19 points. You know, the interesting thing, you look at that halftime score, it was 41 to 27. One year ago in the state championship game, Simeon won over Peoria Richwoods in overtime by a final score of 31 to 29. So it's a blitzkrieg offense tonight. Kenny Leverett the other way with the basket for O'Fallon. He has eight points and eight rebounds. Nice catch inside by Flowers. And the recipient of an outstanding pass by Kevin Johnson away from the defense. High-low basketball, textbook style right there. People want to learn how to play the high-low game? That was it. Burton and a little fadeaway. Keith Burton has his fifth point. He's given them quality minutes both ball games today. We talk about that high, low, high post, low post. One thing Simeon does a great job, they get great angles on their passes. It's all about getting 45 degree angles, reversing the ball side to side, pinning your man on your back like Flowers just wanted. They reverse it one more time, they'll get it to him. Orange forced it up. Johnson goes high for the board. He came from the free throw line to get that offensive rebound. Incredible vertical leap, and he went a long way to go get it. That arm was above the rim, and he stayed right with it, and boom. He's such a quick jumper. He's right back at the 10. 
going to hear some from Jared Woolfolk next season. Six foot three inch junior has 10 points. He's had himself a nice tournament. Very well defined. He plays with a great presence and confidence. Really coming to his own this weekend. He had 16 points in the quarterfinal win over Lockport. Posting up Johnson. There's Burton for the rebound. Copeland kind of lost sight of maybe where he was, and here comes Rose. Robert Smith chaining the plate. And it just keeps going up and up and up until Tim Flowers picks up his 22nd point of the night. If you can't succeed, you try, try again. Isn't that the old one? And that's what Simeon's lived on tonight. You see a fellow like Tim Flowers, big man, but he's quick on his feet. I mean, boom, 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 he's up there. Quick jumpers, the entire team is there, just explosive with their legs. We have 4.53 to play here in the third quarter. Simeon has stretched the lead to 17, 50 to 33, back at Carver Arena after these words from your local sponsors. Closed captioning tonight, and as our entire tournament coverage has been provided by Caption Associates. You can visit them at captionassociates.com. Let's go over to Lee Hall for this update. Okay, Dave, Todd Moeller, the uh, AD at O'Fallon, came over and begged me, begged me to mention that the soccer team went to the Elite Eight this year, too, because he knew he was going to get in trouble if he left anybody out. You can't leave anybody out. So just if you're keeping score at home, it was soccer, cheerleading, pom-poms, baseball, cross-country, and basketball all went to state this year for O'Fallon after never having won a trophy before this year. Now back to you. Todd's, Todd's going to be okay now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lee. You know, one thing to ask Todd is uh, why doesn't he let his team travel to the state basketball tournament in style? You know, we see all the buses pulling up outside the hotels in the Civic Center, the big charter buses. O'Fallon didn't do that because they didn't want to do that. They had been riding that yellow school bus all year long. That's what the players wanted. Superstition. We don't need the fancy buses. Let's just get on the big yellow taxi. That's a great example of dance with the one that brung you, because the school <laughs> bus brung them all year long, and it got them here to the final game in Peoria, where they're trying to hang around after that three by Wolfolk. 13 points for Jared Wolfolk. That's his third three-pointer of the night. 14-point difference here in the 2A title game. Next year, there'll be four classes crowning state champions. Tim Flowers again, 24 for Flowers. He had 28 in the opening game here in Peoria against Thornton 24 hours ago. 16 shots for Flowers. That's how unselfish this team is. They just getting the, the behemoth, the ball inside. You get a chance to take it that drive once again. As you see the Wolfolk penetration and a great step in, got his shoulders squared up and taking the charge. Simeon very well coached defensively. Yes, indeed, he did get there, Derek Rose. And he and he picked the spot. I mean, he, it was like there was an X on the floor he was going to get to. And we talked about how O'Fallon players play a lot of minutes today. Actually, the Simeon, probably the top six players played heavy minutes. They did not go very deep to their bench in any of these games in this tournament. Copeland finds Burton. Flowers with his ninth rebound. Two on one. Burton to a flying Wolfel. The other way, Johnson. That was a flying flush. He took off from 15 and just tomahawked it. Here comes Rose. He has Flowers ahead. And a foul as Flowers, you could see him looking back for a potential pass back. Well, let's take a look back at Kevin Johnson. Well, again, his ability to catch in the open floor is one thing, but he can go vertical as quickly as anybody. His elbow was above the rim as he threw that one downtown. Hall off the inbounds for a trade. Brandon Hall with two threes in this quarter. 19 point lead by Simeon, 57 38. Yeah. 
This is Wolf Oaks Knight. He feels it. Leverett creates the space. Rose wants to go. Here we come. Wanted to get it to Brian Orange, just a wee bit behind he, the six with three inch senior. He is a thoroughbred, and he gets the ball down the floor on the dribble as fast as anyone we've seen in high school basketball. His acceleration speed is just incredible and cannot be matched by anybody on the floor or maybe anybody in the state of Illinois. Tough shot from Wolfolk. Brock Conley will get the long board and drill the three. Ahead to Flowers. He wanted a little bit more elevation on that. Uh-uh for Burton. Simeon once again looking to push. They don't have it. And so they're very, very happy to get in a half court set and let Rose survey the defense. They make that recognition and make the simple transition back. It's all about decision making. And Rose makes great decisions consistently for his team. Entry inside. That's an easy two. Ball went from the point to the wing, to the baseline side, away from the defense, and a little lay-in. Outstanding offensive basketball execution by Simeon Wolverines. Flowers with 10 of his 28 points here in the third quarter, winding down, final 30 seconds. Wolfolk sees an opening. What the game Jared Wolfolk is having. 17 points, they've all come in the last two periods. Yet, his team trails by 18. Derek Rose will wait till about 10 seconds, which is right now. He'll play one against five, and he'll probably throw the ball out to somebody else for a three. Now he's going to give it up early and get involved in the offense himself. He gets it back. And that will close our third quarter. The sixth-ranked team in the nation, the Simeon Wolverines, eight minutes away from going back-to-back. We'll hit that fourth quarter coming up after these local messages. And we're ready to get going here in the fourth quarter. The O'Fallon crowd is feeling it, baby. They're down 18, but they have not given up hope yet, guys. And I know, Dave, you're not satisfied unless you get me jumping up and down in the crowd. So <laughs> I fulfilled my job requirement again for this year. It's not a state tournament without it. Back down to you. <laughs> you are right, sir. But I want to know what that headdress is all about. Look at that. <laughs> he fits right in with the young guys, doesn't he? You know, those 51 weeks of aerobics all pay off when we get to Peoria. We enter the fourth quarter and with Lee Hall and Mark Lindo. I'm Dave Bernhard, Simeon. The big lead, and O'Fallon looking to get one of their big players, Brad Copeland, back in play. He has eight points in this game, but he's not scored since two minutes to go in the first half. And he was ahead of the break. They could have found him and said, Orange powers his way in. His strength will net him a chance at a three-point play. Here are your third quarter stats brought to you by Menard. Save big money at Menard. O'Fallon continues to struggle from the field. They just can't get it done. Simeon, they're even at 50%. I thought that the, the free throw line would be huge for O'Fallon. They've only been there four times. Flowers and Johnson, 46 points. Huge night inside for the Wolverines. Look at Rose get up there. Rose is like a ballroom dancer. Slow, slow, quick, quick. Slow, slow. He can change speed so well, he's just a ballerina in there. The miss on one side, the put back on the other. What new? Brandon Hall this time, six foot two inch senior, his eighth point. 15 second chance points is domination above for the Wolverines. Malat averaging 11.1 points per game. He's not reached that average in either of his two games here in this tournament. Misses on the three. Loose ball comes down. Rose with it now. See how many touches they get this possession. Starting to use a little bit of time. Three different guys have touched the ball right now. Derrick Rose, All-American, 
McDonald's All-American, Brian Orange. He could possibly be a high school All-American baseball player before this season's over. And Tim Flowers now has his 30th point of this game. 67-43. Wolfolk better chase that one down or there's going to be a black jersey jumping on it real quickly. You know, Simeon, they do a great job. We'll get that great job in just a second, but first we'll let you know that this copyrighted broadcast is presented for the entertainment, non-commercial use of our audience, any reproduction or other use of this program without the express written consent of the Illinois High School Association and cost broadcast sales is strictly prohibited. A great job of passing the basketball, keeping it off the floor. Robert Smith actually has his team go to women's basketball games and watch their fundamental prowess and how women's teams utilize the pass more so than the dribble and utilize screens. And you can see his team picked up on that. An excellent coaching ploy by Robert Smith having them watch women's hoops. What a show Flowers is putting on for us tonight. It's not just about the scoring, it's about the post moves, and here's one coming right at you. He fakes with his right shoulder, he dips to his left shoulder, he's able to take the bump, get the bucket, the finish all at once. Even when he feels the double team coming from the weak side, he's able to have that sixth sense to spin opposite the pressure and get himself in a position to score. 33 points, 10 rebounds for Flowers on 14 of 21 shooting from the floor, five of five from the line. A monster game already first team all state selection it's almost quiet how Simeon is out to a 27 point lead well the expected is happening the miracle did not nice little jumper there from Keith Burton he'll be back next year for the Panthers You know, should Simeon win this game, and with that much time remaining, it certainly is a more than distinct possibility. 35 now for Flowers. They would become the first team to have played in game four of the quarterfinals and win a state championship since 1997, and Emmanuel Rams did that. Now, you play your little statistical games. How hard is it to work your way up all the way from that game four? Well, Rose played 25 minutes today. Johnson only 22, Flowers 30, so they were spent, but played late last night, late today, and back tonight. But they are just so gifted, so athletic, and these guys, they can run all day, all night, and that fact has been proven out here this weekend. We've seen some great open four play by Simeon. The feed, Johnson, denied by Copeland. Oh, O'Fallon fans, don't believe it. You beat his judge. Rose once again getting the ball to a teammate. This time, Johnson in a position to score. Looked like a lot of ball, but Kevin Grayer, very well officiated crew. Demetrius Randall, Ronnie Jones, Kevin Grayer, right on the call. Got a little body action and gets Jones to the free throw line with the call. Okay, so you tuned in to see the big scoring show from Derrick Rose. How many points does Derrick have tonight? One. A single free throw for Rose. And Kevin Johnson, he takes that pass and able to convert it into free throw. So he gets a lot of points for a lot of people as Derrick Rose. 20 points for Johnson, 35 for Flowers. Malat for O'Fallon. Burton, his shot is altered. Copeland's tip will not go. Leverett, a path to the bucket and couldn't finish it off. Rebound number 11 for Flowers. For three. Brian Orange cannot hang on. The under five minute timeout and big number 52 having himself a night in his final high school game. Tim Flowers, Simeon team up big, back with a final 448 after these local messages. Here's your Chevy drive of the game brought to you by your Chevy dealers. Proud to support high school athletes and their families. Best of luck in the tournament from your winning Chevy team, Kevin Johnson, providing the Chevy drive of the game. O'Fallon making the trip to 
Peoria. And how unlikely was that given O'Fallon's historical perspective in basketball? They had never won a sectional game. I didn't say a sectional championship. They had never won a sectional game. And now in Rick Gibson's second year, as he took over for Kevin Kellerman, Kellerman retired to watch his son Chris play as a chip at Central Michigan. And all Rick Gibson has done is get his team to the state championship game in year number two. Brad Copeland will get credit for that tip in his 10th point. First time he's scored in this game since the two minute mark of the first half. Brian Orange with the miss. We said be hearing from him in the baseball season. Great catcher. They say he's a better right fielder as a cannon for an arm. Leroy Franklin, the dean of Chicago Public League baseball coaches, a fine gentleman, a fine coach. The Wolverines, one of the best city baseball teams as well. Orange couldn't get it to go. Malat for O'Fallon has Leverett ahead. Nice little hesitation in the air by Kenny Leverett. And he's reached double figures with 10 for the O'Fallon Panthers. Nice pass by Malat and then Leverett with the finish. O'Fallon still fighting hard. That's that old pride factor. I know that's a little cliche, but that's what you, you're playing on, this, on a state stage. That's what you must do. Copeland the rebound, that's his 10th. He's got a double-double, 10-10, along with Leverett, also 10-10. Brock Conley can't get it to go down. That's back-to-back double-doubles for Copeland. He had the, the, the 16 boards with 21 points this afternoon. Johnson. He saw that opening, and on his week take a look at our state champs from this year our last four weekends here on the IHSA TV network Breeze Central and girls class A congratulations to the Fenwick Friars and girls double A last weekend here it was Moreau Forsyth taking home the class A state championship trophy as Rick Gibson has removed his starters from this ball game he's given his reserves two minutes and 59 seconds here to put their name in the scorebooks and permanent records of IHSA tournament history the last Double A state championship ball game being played out of the two class system. We go to four classes next year. Four teams from each class will make it to Peoria in boys basketball in two separate weekends. In 1972, the first year of two class basketball, Thornwood finished back to back after they beat uh, had beaten Quincy, and now that we're going to finish with back to back title winners as well. Copeland still into the game. He along with Kenny Leverett on the floor. For O'Fallon. This is Chris Hersey with the miss. And now Robert Smith will clear his bench. Look out. And the fans here, if you're O'Fallon, you're saying, and a boy, Chris Hersey. If you're the other 6,000 people, you're saying, Chris Hersey, what are you doing? You yeah. denied us the highlight reel. <laughs> Derek Rose was going to put the exclamation point on his career. And Chris Hersey off the bench says, not a chance. All right, so here's Chris Hersey. Three years from now, four years, ten years from now, <laughs> I blocked Derek Rose's shot. I fouled him, but I still blocked it because I think in about two years from now we're going to see number 25, Derek Rose, playing at a level beyond Memphis University. So where does he fit in with the all-time greats in the state of Illinois? That have played in this state tournament. You're, you're talking about Kevin Garnett, Isaiah Thomas, Doc Rivers, Andre Iguodala, Darius Miles, Kazi Russell. Are you asking me that question? It's a wide open Man. banter. That's what you socialize over at the local watering holes, I'll tell you what. But he is special. His game has been elevated. If he continues to work a mid-range jump shot and be able to shoot the ball off the dribble, I think his body's going to fill out even more. He does some really special and magical things with the basketball. He can do everything with the ball except make it talk. And understand, we're saying this on a championship night that he has scored only two points. Hey, that's long range right there from Ace Johnson. Maybe appropriately, Rose, the only starter still on the floor, thanks to him missing that last free throw. Next dead ball, he should get an ovation from this crowd. Very well behaved, great demeanor, handles himself very well, mature beyond his years on the floor, not much showmanship, just carries his lunch pail to work and gets the ball to other people and enjoys doing it. 
Coming up short on the shot was Daryl Stevenson. Here's Hersey. And on the scoreboard again is Ace Johnson. And now here is your dead ball. And we'll take a break. 127 left. 75-54. Simeon on top. Be back after this. There's a lot of dry jerseys in this ball game. Guys, they're getting on this floor here for the final 60 seconds of the 2007 season. What a great run for O'Fallon, and what a culminating exclamation point for Derrick Rose. The exultation that he must have felt as the entire Carver Arena came to their feet in respect to what he's done for this program. Well, Zarek Jones will get two for Simeon. You know, when Rose left the floor, his hands raised above his head, thanking the fans for what they have done for him. Rebound comes off to the Wolverines. The O'Fallon Panthers not winning a sectional game until this season. They wanted to do what no O'Fallon team had ever done, and they did it. Simeon, their goal this year was to do what no Chicago Public League team had ever done. And the Simeon Wolverines will have done it. Back-to-back -back state championships for Simeon. Robert Smith, the head coach for Simeon, said, we're not defending anything as he made the trip down to Peoria. We're here to win a championship this year. But now, now, Mark, that it's in the books, it means so much to Robert Smith and that Simeon family. On our open, we said, would we find out if this was the biggest upset ever? Didn't happen. We find out if this was the best team ever. The banter will begin, but this was quite a show today. Absolutely performance let's go down to Lee Hall all right thanks a lot guys Robert Smith congratulations two state championships in a row your team was everything it was made out to be and more here tonight oh yeah they really stepped it up you know I mean I'm gonna miss Derek and Tim but I mean Simeon's still gonna go on but it's just a lot with those two guys out there Derek told us at the beginning of the game that he was gonna show people how it really is of a point guard by distributing the ball I mean he pushed it at him got Tim easy baskets I mean, man, what else can you say? The only thing harder than winning a championship is winning two in a row, and it was different circumstances, different team, but talk about the pressures of, of coming back and doing this two years straight. Well, there's a lot of pressure on us. We had a, a real good schedule this year. We played some of the best teams in the country. We was ranked high in it when we season started. Uh, just upholding that was one of the best things that was possible. But these young men, they came in and worked every day in practice, did what they had to do in the classroom to be out here, and I'm just proud of them. Robert Smith, congratulations. Sir. Thank you. All right, back after this on the IHSA TV Network. Fastest coaches to two state titles. Wayne McLean, you're not going to beat that one. Two seasons it took him, but there's Robert Smith right there. Two championships within three years. Finn Solario, Stan Changman, Dawson Hopkins, Ron Belling, and of course our own IHSA TV Network's Bill Hitt. A coach's dream is to win a state title one time, sometime in his career, maybe even get downstate. But to go back to back, to get two state titles, Robert Smith, what a, nobody takes that away from him. He did it last year in that 31-29 overtime game with a snail's pace. He did it tonight, running the thoroughbreds up and down the hardwood, putting on uh, just a performance that you uh, just had to be here to enjoy how they distributed the basketball. You know, not to get into all the numbers right now, but this basketball team scored 29 baskets. 17 of those had assists. They're incredibly unselfish, where they distribute the ball and make the extra pass on a consistent basis. Eight assists for Derek Rose, but our country insurance and financial services player of the game, what a night for Tim Flowers. 35 points, 12 rebounds, perfect from the line, 15 of 24 from the field for the first team All-State selection. You see it, a variety of moves. Top post player in the state for the last two years, comes up big in his final high school game. Well, he's wide, but he's very versatile. He's agile. He can catch the ball in traffic, asking Johnson. He does things for a big man. He plays very, very big, but he does 
things like a guard can do with the way he handles the ball, the way he catches the ball, and he's got a great guy getting the ball. You know, Derek Rose, the quintessential point guard, if you would. He makes everybody around him better, and there's a whole bunch of Wolverines, the Halls, the Oranges, the Johnsons, the Flowers, that reap the benefits of that kind of player. Well, let's get the awards, and we'll go to Paul Herzog, our public address announcer. A record of 28 and 8. Let's meet the superintendent of O'Fallon, Russ Clover. Principal, Steve Dernbeck. <laughs> Athletic Director, Todd Moeller. <laughs> Athletic Trainer, Beth Pachetta. <laughs> Head Coach, Rick Gibson. Assistant coach, Eric Meinkold. Assistant coach, Brian Nunez. Assistant coach, Ryan Blaha. And assistant coach, L.P. Wills. Now let's meet the Panther players. Mike Malott. Cameron Meyer. Ace Johnson. Brad Copeland. Terrence Gaddy. Chris Percy. Keith Burton. Kenny Leverett. Brock Conley. Wes Phillips. Jared Wolfo. Malcolm Hudson. John Levin. Jeff Huff. And Bo Benton. Presenting the medallions to Simeon will be Ross Cuccio, assisted by Anthony Rainey. At this time, please meet the Wolverines of Chicago Simeon. First place, a record of 33 and 2. <laughs> Representing Chief Executive Officer Arnie Duncan is CPS Board President Rufus Williams. <laughs> Principal Tamara Sterling. <laughs> Athletic Director Melvin Dillard, Jr. Head coach, Robert Smith. <laughs> Assistant coach, Leonard Thomas. Assistant coach, Fred McClinton. Assistant coach, Marcus Alderson. Assistant coach, Andre Hamlin. Now the Wolverines players. 
Joshua Anderson. Dion Butler. Timothy Flowers. Daniel Green. Brandon Hall. Walter Ingram. Kevin Johnson. Mazarek Jones. Isaiah Linton. Bryant Orange. Derek Rose. Keon Smith. Pierre Sneed. Daryl Stevenson. And Troy Williams. Presenting the second place trophy will be Paul Whittington. Will Coach Gibson and the captains of O'Fallon step forward and receive the second place trophy, 2007 Class AA Boys. Presenting the first place trophy will be Ron Connor, with Coach Smith. And the captains of Simeon step forward to receive their first place trophy. Class AA Boys 2007 State Champions. Congratulations to both teams for great seasons. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association of the City of Peoria, thank you for being here for the 100th State Basketball Tournament in the state of Illinois. Wherever you're driving next, please buckle up and remember, please drive safely. Thank you. Good night. I know it may sound like a cliche and, and maybe a weak one at that, but truly tonight, both of these two teams are champions. Simeon holds that state trophy up there, 77-54. The final score, they go back to back, claim these two state titles. On the other side, O'Fallon, a championship to get to Peoria, a championship to play in a second place game against a team that people are gonna be arguing about for many years to come. Is this, is this Simeon team the best ever? For O'Fallon, I guarantee you, they will feel like they won a state championship as well. Absolutely, you know, they made an incredible run Nobody had really heard of O'Fallon basketball before this year. And to run through this tournament like they did, they played superb basketball yesterday to survive against Lockport. And then I thought they played it outstanding. You know, just a terrific brand of basketball today. They just ran in to something incredibly special tonight in the Simeon Wolverines. 19 points per game average. That was the average margin of victory here in Peoria. And since the sectional semifinals, Simeon had defeated their teams, their opponents, by 23 points. And in many of those games, Mark, they could have named that difference. Well, domination, it was evident tonight. It was evident all season long. And let the arguments begin. But tonight, they made a very, very large and loud statement that they might be the best ever. 77-54, your final score capping the 100th year of basketball in Illinois. Simeon, the state champions in 2007, there were 99 that preceded them to take home the big trophy, and we honor those 100 champions right now on the IHSA TV Network.